Caddy is an HTTP2 enabled web server written in Go by Matt Holt. It supports HTTPS by default, and we're going to talk about that. And it's one of the easiest web servers that provide a lot of functionality, such as proxying, load balancing, and much, much more recently. It's also supported Quick, which is the new HTTP3. Hopefully, once it's up, uh, it is approved by the Internet Engineering Task Force. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up Caddy Web Server, how to run it locally as just vanilla, unsecure HTTP web server, which we have done that a lot this channel and then finally we're gonna know how to secure it with HTTP which is the best part of Cuddy which takes all the hassle from you okay there is something we need to do first but that's not very hard and we talked about it in the channel right we're gonna probably make another video showcasing the advanced features and the Cuddy file and all that stuff right that you can do that I'm gonna make this a very short video uh, if you're new here welcome my name is Hussein and in this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by exam so if you want to become a better software engineer consider subscribing hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video with that said let's just jump into this video guys all right so the first step here I'm gonna break this video into uh, four parts maybe the first part is, is the installation I am going to use Mac but I'm gonna reference hopefully in the banner here you're gonna see a link to the awesome job that Matt did the author of this web server with the doc so there is a great doc showing you the installation on Windows Linux and Mac you essentially want to be able to get to a state where you can go to your command prompt and write Kadi and not get an error essentially right that's what we want to get into right that's the state you want to download it set the path do it do that jazz and then once you do that you're ready to essentially set uh, run your web server so the first step the second step is i want to run the web server you, get, you have an html page handy dandy in hand all right so we can we're going to use that and then once we have this page we have running with the next section where we want to expose your machine to the public internet which is not exposed by the by default right you can argue that you can do the whole tutorial on the cloud and you can skip the whole thing right but if you if you don't want to spend the money or you just want to test and just drive it on your own machine you can definitely do that we're going to do a port forwarding from my router to expose my private local ip address to the public internet so so obviously this uh, certificate authority can generate uh, as an, an, a certificate for me and then secure my server okay and then finally we're gonna run it with the secure HTTPS so let's just jump into this guy so to install that we will basically use homebrew if you have Mac you can install homebrew and homebrew is just basically this this is a repository registration where you can download and install stuff for it's it's like a distribution right so you can do brew install caddy right and essentially that does it for us okay it's gonna download and that's just it's just 20 megs guys it's really cool all right it's a very small file once you do that okay it's clear and then let's go to a folder that has my index to html or the content that i want to serve and uh, my content is a, in a pay folder called static page and I created an index.html file here. And if, if we just vim it here, I can show you. Hello world, served by Cuddy. That's that's the HTML. It's a very simple stuff. Okay. But it's just show you the idea. Once you are in the same folder, literally just type Cuddy. Okay. And if you hit enter, you will be served, sir with default port http and the default port is 2015 and i think that's the year where caddy was being written essentially i think that's when he released uh, caddy so he used that as the default port kind of nostalgic in a way i like it so 2015 right so let's test this thing let's drive it all right guys here i have a chrome here open so if i type one of those it's gonna work right if i type localhost 2015 which is the default port there you go it works all right if you got 404 that means you don't have a default index to the html page or if you have like a specific page name you can just do the folder name and then hussein.html whatever your name is right whatever the page is okay you can also use the ip address i think this is my ip address yep 
that works too. So you can use the, your local IP address, okay? And you can use also your host name to basically consume this page. This is, this is boring though, right? Because if I went to the to my mobile phone on 4G and tried to consume this page, I'm gonna get an error because I am not on that internal network. If I am on Wi-Fi, yes, I can consume it. But if I give this link to my friend, through WhatsApp or whatever, they cannot consume this thing because it's not on the public internet. So what do you do? Who is in the public internet? Only one device. If you're assuming this is your internal Wi-Fi and your machine is on the Wi-Fi or it's hooked directly to the router, you have one public IP address. And that guy is the router, okay? And the router does NAT. We talked about NAT, guys. I'm going to reference the video here. And it basically NAT things up, network address translation. It translates your private IP address to the public IP address. So this is his, the router page. And I can show you that this is my public IP address, okay? And obviously, if I give this public IP address to my friends, it's going to get an error because... It doesn't know where to forward this request to, right? So that's where we need to talk about port forwarding. And I'm gonna make I made a detailed video about public IPs versus private IPs. If you want to know more about it, I'm gonna reference it right here, guys. Go watch that video if you want to learn. But essentially, we have an HTTP server now, but I want a fancier HTTP server. I want an HTTPS server that runs on port 443 and an HTTP server that runs on port 80, which is that's the default port, right? I want Cuddy to do this for me. But to do that, we need kinda to expose my machine to the public internet. And this, this is done by port forwarding. So here's my firewall configuration on my router. I don't know why it's called firewall. This is essentially a NAT version of the fire uh, of the router. And what it does, I created two rules here. It says, hey, router, if you received a request coming from the public internet on your port 80, please forward it to moi. And moi is this machine that is I'm running, Hussein Mac, right? On the same port. Okay, that I literally created that uh, that rule. Okay. Once you do that, I, I named it literally HTTP and HTTPS. Okay. Once you do that, you will be ready to do the next thing. Okay. Which is you go and uh, register for a dynamic DNS. Now we have a public, a public IP address. I can give this public IP address to my friends and that will work. Right. But it's boring. Who remembers public IP addresses? How do you even remember this thing? Okay. It is impossible. So what we do instead is we create a domain name like www.hosseinnasr.com or google.com or whatever. Right? So you can register a domain name and then point it using what we call an A record to your IP address. This is literally a new record. And domain like GoDaddy or Google charges you for that record. They charge you money like yearly. Sometimes it's like as cheap as $1 a year. Sometimes it's like as expensive as $300 depending on how popular your domain becomes, right? But there is this site that's called No IP and there's another one called Dine.com that allows you to register for free, right? But here's the thing, you don't get to pick fancy names, you get to pick boring, ugly names, right? And uh, it's free, who cares, right? So that's the cool thing. Go ahead and register at noip.com, do your thing, once you register and all that thing, you go to this page and you create a host name. And here's what you do, you create a host name and you say, I want an A record, which is that's what we said, hey, I want to point to an point the host name to an IP4 address, which I have, right? And then let's call it, I don't know, I'm gonna call it Edmond Dante. That's the first novel I read. And then this is what you get. You get you get this, that's what you get, right? Just pick anything, three utilities.com, right? It's ugly, right? You don't get, it's free because it's free, right? And here's what I wanted to do, right? <laughs> actually, no IP actually detects your public IP and shows it to you. But if you don't know it, go to your router and then just do that copy and paste it. Okay, it will just detect it for you. And then pick a record and then create host name. And that's your host name right there. This is now this is my website. That, that this is edmondante.3utilities.com. It's very ugly, I know. But who cares? It's we're testing, it's free, right? So if you if you want to 
you can pay no IP to give you a proper host name, like yourname.com. We don't care about that now, okay? Now we have a name record. We have this record points to this IP. So any request to that host name will take me to my router, which guess what? If someone is visiting port 80 or 443, they will take me to my machine, which is hopefully running Cuddy. Okay, so let's do that. I know I'm pronouncing Cuddy incorrectly, right? I have a thick accent. <laughs> Right, you guys made this very clear. All right, so here's 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 the thing. Okay, guys, it's very simple. Let's kill this Cuddy instance. But this is what I want to do. What you want to do is do Cuddy dash host, and then I think I copied that thing right. Edmond.zero3.com. And here's the cool thing about Cuddy. Cuddy will generate a public key for you. Public key, private key, certificate, right? The whole thing and then it will secure it for you so it will host that stuff it will communicate with let's encrypt which is the certificate authority through an api which is pretty pretty cool if you think about it right those guys that's you can donate for them obviously i i really recommend that but those do it for free for you that's amazing right you have to pay for a certificate to say that hey my server is secure and trusted but Guess what? Let's encrypt do it for free. That's pretty cool. Once you do that, here's the thing. The first thing is gonna ask you, Cuddy will ask you, hey, by the way, you have to provide your your email. That's the least thing you can do, right? Because they need to know this is a real person behind this server, right? And just in case things went wrong. It's okay. You can email me, guys. That just don't no spam, please. And then Here's the thing, guys, if you don't get this, and this is what happened to me the first time, I was experimenting with Caddy, I think that's how you said, and then I got a lot of problems and it never worked for me. So I'm gonna show you what I did to fix it, all right, after this video, after this uh, part. But once you do, it's gonna contact it, it's gonna do a let's encrypt, do all that thing, requesting certificate, and guess what, guys? It will, by default, I didn't specify the port, right? It actually, run on port 443 and 80 and guess what guys now if i go to this guy let's go to the chrome again and we are secure see this lock this is a secure site guys you just spin up a secure web server guys all right so this is pretty cool this is pretty cool right this is very cool and they're using i think tls 1.3 version 3 which is amazing guys right we talked about tls i'm gonna reference it here guys tls 1.2 version 1.3 huge performance difference okay all right guys so here's what you do when you get into trouble with this if you get errors with this here's what you do there is a dot caddy file caddy <laughs> there's a dot caddy file that gets created if you first do this and you do a mistake like i don't know Anyway, I did this before and I I never got it to work, right? Because I have this old stale Cuddy folder there. So to to find that folder, at least in Mac, you can go to uh, home, I think it's called users, and then your username, and then you can find .caddy folder. Just remove that thing, kill it. Kill that Cuddy folder and then try again and that will work for you okay because that that's what uh, did it for me okay so that's that trick all right guys hope you enjoyed this video you just spin up and secure http public for free guys right so you can now give this link to anyone right and uh, they will essentially work normally because this is what is happening guys right? so let's go th quickly through it because we, we, we ended this video we created someone visit this website page right it's on, let's say, even an HTTP is going to be redirected automatically to HTTPS. That's what Caddy does as well. If you if you visit this, I killed the server. That's why it's going to. If you visit this web page, what happens is it goes to that domain and says, "Okay, who is this guy? Who is Edmond Dante? It is this a public IP? So it's going to send a request, right? So that's look up very quick look up using UDP, I believe." finds the IP address, makes a GET request to this IP address, or at least established to, uh, attempts to establish 
a TCP connection with this on port 80, which is the default because you didn't specify any port here, would go there and it makes a request on port 80, which then go and says, okay, port 80, yeah, I have a rule that says port 80, please forward it to Hussein Mac, which is this machine that I'm recording from, all right? And then says, yeah, all right, that's, that's okay, we we have it. And then Kadi says, hey, port 80 is not cool because uh, I don't want you to work on port 80, I want you to redirect it to port, port 3, so it, it will respond with a redirect command, I think 301 most permanently, and then says, hey, Please connect to this side instance so it will close that TCP connection, create another TCP connection on 443, does a TLS, handshake, and all that jazz, and then immediately connect you to that, right? Uh, obviously, it goes back to the router and does all that stuff. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and uh, go, get some, go give some love to Matt, right? And uh, he's he built a really cool application. And if you go to Wikipedia, he built this thing in five months right? Kudos, right? Kudos to this guy, man. If you mad, if you were listening to this, man, kudos. You did a great job, man. All right. That's for me, guys. Stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.